All right. Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing? Happy Sunday. Um, it is goodness me, it's March. I can't believe this. Welcome to the March edition of the Max Moments Book Club. So whether you are here live, whether you are going to be watching this on replay, um, I just want to say hello. I just want to say uh, hello there. Hey, Bella, what's going on? I just want to say welcome. Um, it's been it's been awesome. So one of the things that's been happening is I've been getting a lot of feedback. So uh, we're having a few v viewers that are watching this live, but I've definitely been having people reach out to me um, after the fact saying I couldn't watch it live, but I got to watch it on replay. And so, again, whether you're watching it live or you're watching it on replay, I just want to say welcome. I hope you're doing well. Again, happy Sunday. And um, yeah, can you believe this? We are already close to the end of March, which means we are a quarter of the way through 2024. So um, how's 2024 going for you? I hope it's going awesome. And uh, and like I said, 2024, right back at the beginning when I first started this book club, I told you, I said, you know, I'm hoping that this book club is going to be something that you can uh, use to help you create the type of 2024 that you want. So that's how short time is. We already are a quarter of the way through. 2024. So anyways, just want to say that uh, for me personally, 2024 has been awesome. Uh, working at Pepperdine has been fantastic. Also been branching out with the Life to the Max, been doing some keynote speeches, been working with some groups some organizations, and it's been fantastic to speak on stages, to do this book club, and to uh, to just really make my impact. So anyways, so if you're here, let's say, Bella, put you in the chat. I'm just reminding you, hello, I'm writing this here. I'm just going to send you a little note right here to all the people that are on. And um, all right. So anyways, like I said, so this is the third. This is the third installment of the Max Moments Book Club. And what we're going to do today is we're going to do like we've always done. I committed uh, for this year, for the year of 2024, what I committed to doing was every single month for the for the for the 2024 year so 12 12 months what i would do is, is each month i would get on and i would do a live max moment max moments book club which is basically to say uh taking one of the max moments from this book uh so if you're watching this now again whether it's live or or on replay whether it's uh whether you have the book or not, my plan is, is to go through one of these max moments and do a little bit deeper of a dive into um, how you can apply these max moments and how, or the max moment that we've been working on and how you can apply it to your life, okay? So just a recap, if you remember, um, or if you've read the book, and if you haven't, then I'll just go through it again. But there are basically five sections to the book. So in this book, there are 42 max moments. There are five sections to the book, and there's also an additional bonus max moment. But the five sections, the first section is on vision. You've got to have a great vision for your life. Once you have a great vision, section two is on mindset. Like how do you create the right mindset to follow out the vision that you have for your life or the vision like we're saying here for 2024? Once you have a great vision, you have a great mindset, then you've got to implement the right habits to be able to take the right actions necessary to create the, uh, the pathway towards what you want. And then once you've got great vision, you've got great mindset, and you've got great habits, invariably, what's life going to do, right? It's going to hit you in the face, something's going to happen, you're going to take a left turn, a right, foot, right turn, you're going to get knocked off course. And so when that happens, when adversity hits, how can you meet the moment? How can you meet that time period in your life with a level of resilience that allows you to still carry on the path and to not give up and to not be deterred and to say, I will continue on. I will find a way to get the things that I want in my life. So that's section four of the book is resilience. And then the fifth section is always been a personal favorite of mine, um, a deep, a deep, meaningful one, which is the fifth section is on happiness. Right. And it's to say, once you've got a great vision, you've got great mindset, you've got great habits, you work through that resilience, you know, in life. There are many people that are really successful, but they're not very happy. And I've always found that to be really interesting. I've always found that to be how is it that people can seemingly have everything, but yet not be fulfilled. And so the fifth section is on happiness. How do you live in the world of high performance? How do you try to do life at a high level, knowing that things are going to hit, going after something so big, and then knowing that when that adversity hits, how do you still find joy in the journey? How do you still find happiness? How do you still find contentment? How do you still find fulfillment? How do you still find a way to enjoy everything in life? And so 
what I decided to do, as I, as I mentioned before, so now we're recapping, then we're going to get the max moment. So the first max moment came from the section of vision. We talked about the vision, okay? And that was the $12,000 piece. It's the very first max moment in the book. Then last month, for the month of February, I took it from section two of the book. And um, and that was about, uh, that was the trapeze. It was called the fly bar. It was about trapeze artists. And that was about how do you create the right mindset? And so this month, the third month, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the third section of the book. And so we're going to talk today about habits, okay? The third section of habits. And so one of the, or the max moment, I should say, that I'm going to talk about today is a personal favorite. And I'm going to explain why it's a personal favorite in just a second. Uh, but it's called, it's on page, if you have the book, it's on page 111, and it's called Don't Break the Chain. There we go. So it's on page 111, and it's called Don't Break the Chain. So if you have the book, I encourage you to open it up um and read along with me if you get if you don't have the book i encourage you to get it and if you don't have the book then i'm going to be reading it anyway so we can we can work ourselves through it but really when we talk about habits okay habits are just these actions right we create actions that allow us to move forward towards the things that we want and so when you have have great habits okay now habits can 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 enter into a lot of different parts of your life okay um, but when you have great habits then I know for me personally that when my life has been influenced by the habits and creating really powerful habits, really foundational habits, really good habits, really influential habits, then I know my life has taken a completely you know, new trajectory. And I'm going to explain about really how this Max Moment relates to the reason why this book exists in just a second. So anyways, let me just get into reading this book. So it's about habits and it's called Don't Break the Chain. So it says, this little productivity hack will help you create winning habits in life. And it comes from the successful stand-up comedian and star of the television sitcom, Seinfeld. Okay, so have you ever watched Seinfeld? Uh, maybe you have. Uh, if, you, if you're on it and you're in the chat, just type in if you've, if you've uh, ever watched Seinfeld, Seinfeld before. Uh, now, Seinfeld is widely regarded as one of the greatest and most influential sitcoms of all time. And of course... I'm talking about, there you go, there you go in the, in, the, in the chat, appreciate it. Yep, so we all heard of Seinfeld. And of course, I'm talking about the comic who stars in Seinfeld, Jerry Seinfeld. Okay, so Jerry Seinfeld, hugely successful person, hugely uh, funny person, and it's just going to do some, some really amazing things in this world. So Jerry, like many extraordinarily successful people, frequently gets asked what has been the key to his rise in fame and fortune and success. And in his answers, he always points back to a time when he was just starting out working the stages at open mic nights and doing stand-up comedy just to try to make a name for himself. Okay, so this is what he says. To be, a to be a brilliant comedian, he said, you have to have great content and funny jokes, right? Makes sense. If you want to be a great comedian, you've got to have great jokes, okay? If you want to be a great – I'm in the world of soccer. If you want to be a great soccer player, you've got to – have a great touch on the ball. If you're a striker, you've got to be able to finish the ball well. If you're a defender, you've got to be great in 1v1 situations. So whatever it's going to be. So for him, he's like, you've got to have great content. You've got to have funny jokes. So when he first started out, he would randomly write down ideas and things when they came to him, right, without any sort of rhyme or reason. And I don't know if you've done that before. Like something comes to you like, oh, bam, I need to write that down. Bam. So, But then he made one small shift. Okay, and that's really one of the keys, I think, to this section on habits is it's not really about the big things, it's about the little things. If that's something you can take away from here, from today, from this max moment, a lot of this idea of habit formation, it really comes down to stripping things down and talking about how can I simplify my life? How can I simplify my habits? It's not really about the big things, it's about the little things. So he made one small shift that ultimately made an extraordinary difference in the results he created in his career. And this is what it was. He made a commitment, okay? He made a commitment, a strong binding commitment to himself to write just one joke a day, just one. Not 10, not 20, not just one, one joke a day, just one. Now it seems simple, I know. Now he wouldn't write an entire act or an entire routine, just one funny line, just one. But here's the thing. Then he would do it the next day. And then he would do it the next day. And then he would do it the day after that and the day after that until he was consistently writing funny content all the time, day after day after day after day. That's habit formation. That's how you create habits is doing something again and again and again and again. But this is the part 
that really made the difference. Okay, so so this is where it gets really interesting. He said to make sure he stayed consistent and created the habit of writing one joke every single day. He got a big calendar and he put it up on the wall in his apartment. Okay, so you just imagine like there's a there's an, a, a calendar right behind me or something like that. Okay, so he put a big calendar, he put it up on the wall in his apartment, and then for every day that he wrote a joke or a funny line, he would put a big red X on the calendar for that day. And so through this consistency, before long, he had this really long chain of red X's that he could visually see every time he looked at the calendar on the wall. So soon that calendar became a visual representation of the momentum that he created, the path that he was on, and the consistent work that he had put in. So imagine that for a second. Imagine looking at a calendar and imagine seeing like a bunch of red X, red X, red X, red X. Each day that you do that habit, bam, red X, next day, red X, red X. And then so all of a sudden you see all of these red X's like one next to each other. Okay. So He's like I said, he, he talked about how it was a visual represent, representation of the momentum he had created, the path he was on, and the consistent work he put in. So, so much that writing the material no longer was about having to create jokes, but it actually became about putting another red X on the calendar and not leaving a single day blank. So his it kind of his mind shifted. So all of a sudden it wasn't really about writing funny jokes anymore. That was a given. He knew he was going to do it every day, but it became more about not wanting to leave one of those squares on his calendar blank. He's like, I've got to, I've got to put a red X. How do I do that? I write a joke. And so his mindset shifted and it was a different perspective. So Jerry Seinfeld shared this story. So now I'm on to page 113. Jerry Seinfeld shared this story with a, a young comic who was curious to know what his key to success was. And the, and the advice that Jerry gave him was simply this, don't break the chain. Okay, name of the name of the max moment. Don't break the chain. Now it sounds so easy, right? And I know what you're thinking. Something so simple can't possibly be the key to success. Okay. But what is easy to do is easy not to do. And that's another thing I want you to take away from today. What is easy to do is easy not to do. Writing a joke a day is easy to do. But also writing a joke, just one, is easy not to do. Eating an apple a day. An apple a day keeps the doctor away, right? Eating an apple a day, it's easy to do. But eating an apple a day is also easy not to do. Reading one max moment a day. There's only, there are only like two or three pages. It's easy to do. But it's also easy not to do. And that's the, the thing about habits is that when you create the right habits, they are easy to do. But they're also easy not to do. And that's why not everyone will do it. And that's what makes this concept of not breaking the chain so genius so as easy as it sounds to not break the chain when life happens and gets in the way and you know the stuff that i'm talking about we must make decisions okay and it's in these moments of decision that we find out how important it is to us whether or not to break the chain this concept of not breaking the chain can apply to literally anything so now i'm talking about you okay it can apply to writing it can apply to music or art or anything creative it can apply to reading for personal development it can apply to working out consistently to get fit or train for a big event it can apply to eating better to improve your health and vitality uh, it can apply to doing extra training to improve a certain skill for for something that you're involved in a certain you know maybe you're on a team again and go back to soccer like um maybe training to for, for a certain uh, certain skill you want to improve it can apply to doing something nice for someone else to show your appreciation like apply it to whatever you want to get better at apply it to whatever you want to create a new level of success in right but just apply it commit to it and do it every day no exceptions okay even if you can't commit two hours to your chosen endeavor even 15 minutes is better than not, nothing at all right? Your goal should not be perfection. I love this part of the book, okay? Your goal should not be perfection. Your goal should be to not break the train. You don't have to be perfect, but you just have to learn and teach yourself and teach your mind, teach your heart to not break the chain. So personally, I used to think that if I did not have an, an entire hour to work out, like I like to work out, okay? But I used to think if I don't have an hour to work out, then it wasn't going to be worth it, right? And I wouldn't work out and I'd skip a day. I wouldn't put an X in that box. And some days I would get a great workout in and then other days I wouldn't do anything. But now I realize that even 20 minutes is better than not working out at all. Now it might not be my ideal workout, but something is better than nothing. And in the process, what am I doing? I'm teaching myself to not break the chain. 
So thus it says this, if you are one of the few who stays consistent and does not break the chain, working on building success in your life day after day, week after week, year after year, then the rewards will be beyond anything that you can imagine. And now I'll leave you with this and then I'm going to give you an example for me and I'm going to turn it over to you. This is now my simple formula for success. And I try to work on this every single day. And it's this, today plus 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 today equals your destiny. So do it today. Grab a calendar, start tying up those X's and don't break the chain. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if you're reading it again, for, for maybe, you know, you've, you've already read through the book and you're reading it again, then don't skip out on this one. This one is a powerful, powerful one. Don't break the chain. So before I kind of turn it over to you to encourage you to create your habits, I want to share with you one story. The reason this book exists is because of Don't Break the Chain. So I wrote that Don't Break the Chain Max Moment a number of years ago, but I wrote this book last year back in 2023. And I remember at the beginning of, of 2023, back in January, so last year, I said I was going to write the book. Now, I didn't know how I was going to do it. I didn't know. I didn't know anybody. I had to. I had to figure out how to write the book. I figure out. I had to figure out like editing. I had to figure out the writing part. I figured out had to figure out the publishing part. There were so many pieces I had to figure out, and it was it was kind of scary. Okay, but I took this concept of don't break the chain. This is how powerful it is. I took this concept of don't break the chain. I said, okay, what am I going to do? If I'm going to write this book, what am I going to do? And this is all I did. I said to myself, I committed to myself. I didn't, I didn't blurt it out to the world. I just committed to myself, to my heart and to my mind. And I just said this, I am going to do at least one thing every single day that pertains to the publishing of this book. Now, it can be a lot of different things, but I said I will not go a day from January 1st all the way through until it's done. I will do something every single day towards the attainment of publishing this book. So some days it was writing. Some days it was editing. Some days it was it was figuring out researching. Some days it was reaching out to people for help. Some days it was contacting people, asking for advice. Some people, sometimes it was working on the publishing part. Sometimes it was, you know, it was, it was lots of emails, but it, the idea was this one single thing every single day. Don't miss a day. And if you add up today, plus the day, 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 plus the day equals your destiny. So I started that on January 1st. And then the middle of June, so was that six months later, I was able to publish my first book. So this idea of don't break the chain, this book is living proof that it works. And so I encourage you today, like think of it right now. Like if you're here and you want to type in the chat, what is a habit? What is an action that you can commit to doing every single day that if you do it enough, over consistently over enough over a long enough period of time that is going to absolutely change the trajectory of your life. This book has changed the trajectory of my life. So many people reach out to me and appreciate all the stuff in there. I've gotten speaking events from this. I've spoken on stages. I just recently spoke at a keynote speaking event and they bought a book for every single person that was at that keynote event. So my life has changed. And how did it change? Don't break the chain. Okay, so what is a habit for you right now? If you have, like, say, having, the, if you're in the chat and you want to write something, like, what is a habit that you can do? And there's two things that you should really think about. Number one is, is what's a habit that's going to help you on the path that you want to take? Okay, that's the that's the first thing. And the second thing is, and I think this is just as important, is whatever that habit is, whatever that action is, how can you dial it down to where it's small enough? that you can act on it every single day. Because sometimes, I know I've been victim of this, is we try and make a habit. Hey, I'm gonna run you know, 10 miles every single day. Well, that's great, but is 10 miles sustainable? What if it was just run one mile? I know it's not 10 miles, but one mile is sustainable because it gives you the ability, it's like a little bite-sized piece and it's, it gives you the ability to try and do it every single day. Some days you're like, I can do more than a mile. And so you do two miles, you do five miles, you do 10 miles. Some days it, it was just like, you know, I'm going to do one email. 
But then some days they're like, I can do 10 immunes. Some days like, I'm going to write one max moment. Some days it was like, I'm going to write three max moments. So you don't have to necessarily cap yourself, but there has to be something that you can commit to and say, at its smallest level, I can commit to doing this small thing every single day and ultimately not break the chain. Okay. So that's my encouragement for you today. That's this month's book club. Okay. I love that. I love that. Doing at least 20 minutes, okay, of running the skills every day to get a better touch and to get better fitness. That's awesome, right? So 20 minutes. Thank you very much for putting that in there, right? 20 minutes. 20 minutes doesn't sound like a lot, right? And some days you might have more than 20 minutes. But if you commit to doing those 20 minutes, today plus the day plus the day plus the day equals your destiny. 20 minutes plus 20 minutes plus 20 minutes plus 20 minutes equals your destiny. One max moment plus one max moment, plus one max moment, plus one max moment. That's going to take you into a completely different direction. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, I plan for these to be kind of bite-sized. They're only, so we're already at 20 minutes. So I'm going to, I'm going to hold it there, but hopefully that's helpful for you. Again, whether you're watching it live, whether you're watching it on replay, um, let me know what you think of these max moments. Let me know if you have a max moment that you prefer that you're like, Hey, I wish, I wish you would talk about this put it in the chat, put it, email me, reach out to me, let me know. But uh, I'm going to be covering all of the sections sequentially over the course of the next few months. And uh, and we should have enough with 12 months in the year. We should have enough enough, max, enough months where we can actually cycle through the sections um, at least once. So, uh, But if you have a preference and there's one you want me to talk about, let me know. I'm happy to entertain that. But most of all, you know, I just want to say this. Thank you for, for listening. Thank you for taking your time. Time is a precious thing. And so the fact that you've taken the time to listen to me here, to, to, to kind of uh, take, this, take this opportunity to, to listen to something that can be productive, that can help you so that you can ultimately go on and live the life that you want. Because as I said before, I'm going to bring it full circle. We are in 2024 and we are already a, qu a quarter of the way through 2024. That is how quickly time is. So don't waste a moment. Don't waste a second. Choose to live every single day at the next level. Choose to live life to the max. And if you do, I promise you, extraordinary things are around the corner. So again, happy Sunday. Thank you for listening to March's Max Moment and Max Moment Book Club. And I will see you again very soon. All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.